Could you mix 24 and say 10 inch to have speed and SPL? Great question, Bob. So the answer is no, you don't want to do that unless you're using like the 10 as a near field or something. And the reason is, is because the 10 will become a liability to that 24. <clears throat> your, your 24 is going to have so much more output and that 10 inch is just going to be struggling to do anything, especially if it's far field. Like if you put a 24 in the front of the room and a 10 in the back or something, it's just not going to work very well. Mm. Uh, I have some real world experience with that. A, a local member had 18s and 10s. Okay. And um, the tens just struggle to keep up, you know? So if you, if you play them, if you limit them to the point where they're not going to exceed excursion or make bad noises, mm -hmm. then they're not really even contributing much at that point. It's, it's, it's too much for the room. And there's a misnomer in this question to begin with. It's kind of a false question. Mm -hmm. There's no such thing as a fast 10 and a slow 24. Mm -hmm. Hertz is how subwoofers work. So if your subwoofer is doing 10 hertz, it's 10 cycles per second, 10 in-out cycles. You can't have a slow 10 hertz or it would be, um, you know, a different hertz. Mm -hmm. So there's no such thing as a slow or a fast subwoofer. If it's doing the right hertz, if it's doing what's asked for, it's, it's going to be on the, on the money with the speed. I think some of the distinction, some of the, there's a really good article on this on database that explains it. But historically, some of the, the reason that people think that a, <clears throat> a big subwoofer is slow is because Years ago, a lot of the big subwoofers had the same size magnets on the small on the smaller drivers, and they were not they were not really built very well. They didn't use the right size boxes, and so the drivers weren't under control. The cone excursion wasn't under control very well, and they would have overhang and they would have extra distortion and so forth. That's not the case anymore. That's not the way that these modern ones are being made. So it's it's really kind of an audio myth that speed woofer. And I'm going to use that term because it always kind of makes me chuckle when you say I got a, you know, I got a speed woofer. It's trying to say that it's very accurate because it's smaller. It's just mm -hmm. marketing bogusness. It doesn't, it's not how it works. Well, and a big part of that, I yeah. think, comes into it too, that people associate, and I, I'm going back to the dry and wet thing I made last time, mm -hmm. that a, a dry feeling with bass, meaning like what you would see at a home theater, 30 hertz and above, they, mm -hmm. they're not able to get really low they think that that is more accurate, right? Because it's, you don't get any of that low frequency or what I'm going to refer to as the wetness down below or that gel that's down below that. And people have this misnomer that that represents accuracy, but in actuality, what's happening is, is you're just not playing anything that's below 30 Hertz or 25 Hertz or so. And you're missing a big chunk of what a low, what a good subwoofer is going to be able to deliver. And that right. is everything coming together instead of this like dry feeling, I guess mm -hmm. it, it happens a lot. And there was another question up here that I'm going to play that I'm going to kind of roll into this is that okay. um, somebody asked about, is it even possible to contain these ultra low frequencies when you're starting mm -hmm. to deal with these single digit numbers? Right. I think it's possible, but it gets very, very difficult when you start getting down into like five hertz, six hertz, yeah. seven hertz, even like 10 hertz. Um, you need a tremendous amount of space and the bass traps that you would need, the size of them to be able to contain that would be mm -hmm. enormous because the wavelengths are so long. So yeah. I think there starts to become <clears throat> this idea that like as an example, there's rooms at Cedia and there's rooms at ISE that seem to do a pretty good job of containing everything. But what mm -hmm. a lot of people don't pay attention to is the subwoofers that are being used in there are more akin to what you would see in a professional movie theater. They're not right. going below 30 or 25 Hertz. And it's much easier to contain that. It yeah. still can be difficult, sure. but you're not going to have this leakage from wavelengths that are ridiculously long that just leak out and can go everywhere. Mm -hmm. So yes, you probably can, but it's going to be much more difficult and much more expensive to be able to make that happen, which is why I just gave up on it altogether. Yeah. Yeah. Once you get into really low frequencies, those, the, the wavelength can be like 10, 20 something feet, right? Longer even. Longer. Yes. Longer. Like, I yeah, mean, 40, 50, yep. 80 feet. Yeah. So when you're thinking about, all right, a typical base trap, even in my room is seven inches. How is a seven inch trap? going to stop a 20, 30, 40 foot wavelength, you know, it it's might stop like, you from hearing your yeah, wall it, vibrating, it, but it, it's, physically, <laughs> it's yeah. not going to stop it. <laughs> yeah, it physically can't, that's just impossible. And so, you know, if you're trying to do 
isolation where you're keeping that sound and, in the and, room. There's a I, lot of different things. I modulus is right. Money. Really, the only way you'd be able to do it is if you had a concrete bunker. Mm -hmm. It's really the only way you'd be able to make that happen. And yeah. a lot of dirt on the other side of the concrete mm -hmm. bunker. Yep. Yep. You just need mass. Yeah. Because it's shaking. I mean, your entire house is shaking, and that's oh, yeah. what's causing that noise outside then is, is mm -hmm. the panels on the side of your house and your siding shaking. For sure. And and so that's what's reverberating outside then at that point. But yeah, if you can stop that room from moving, you're not yeah. going to hear it outside. And guys, of the I'm going to tell you that shaking drywall can be very, <laughs> very loud. If it's not screwed <laughs> down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, sure. Like hear it from multiple floors away sometimes. Oh, 